Hello to all physics enthusiasts and fans of physical experiments. This is Alexei Kolchin, and today we will talk about a remarkable device called the Crookes radiometer. It is a glass sphere from which the air has been completely evacuated, and inside, an extremely lightweight rotor is mounted on a needle, allowing it to spin with very little friction. The blades of this rotor are blackened on one side and can reflect light like a mirror on the other side. Let's conduct the first experiment. We'll turn on the incandescent lamp. And the light from the lamp fell gently and softly on the blades of the rotor and it gradually started to spin. Now let's bring the lamp closer to the table and the rotor started spinning even faster and faster and even more. The radiometer was invented by the English physicist and chemist William Crookes in 1874. He weighed small amounts of substances with high precision and did so in a vacuum. He noticed that when sunlight fell on the scales, their readings changed. Crookes believed that this effect was due to light pressure and designed his device to provide a detailed explanation of this effect and to showcase the principles behind the phenomenon he observed. However, he was wrong because when light falls on a mirrored surface, it transfers twice as much momentum as when it is absorbed by a darkened surface. And therefore, as a result of this particular phenomenon, the radiometer should rotate with its blackened surface facing forward from the light source. But in reality, it rotates with its mirrored surface forward. This can be confirmed in another additional experiment by shining an LED flashlight on the blades of the radiometer. When I shine a flashlight on the mirrored surface, the rotor doesn't even budge. But direct the light intensely onto the already blackened and darkened surface, and the rotor gradually starts to move and spin. But then it turns out that the radiometer spins not due to light pressure, but because of the heating of the rotor. And here on my table is a heater with a parabolic mirror. It gives off a little light, but quite a lot of heat. At this moment, I am directing the energy towards the rotor, and as a result, it begins to spin and rotate continuously. If you move the heater slightly closer, the radiometer's rotor accelerates to five revolutions per second. And it would seem that we can now provide a simple explanation for the radiometric effect. When gas molecules come into contact with the cooler mirrored side of the rotor, they bounce off with the same momentum, such as before. And when gas molecules, such as oxygen or nitrogen, come into contact with the hotter blackened side, they gain additional energy and therefore additional momentum. And these molecules will transfer a greater impulse to the rotor causing it to spin with the mirrored side forward as clearly demonstrated by the experiment, as shown in the experiment. But this elucidation does not indeed take into account that when gas is heated, it expands, its density decreases, and although the molecules carry more momentum, the number of collisions may, as a matter of fact, decrease, and as a result, the pressure on the mirrored and blackened veins may indeed actually equalize as a consequence. So we need to explain why the pressure does not equalize and why the gas needs to be rarefied for this to happen. And now we will do it. For this, we will look at a model that externally does not resemble the Crookes radiometer at all. Let's take a vessel essentially divided into two parts by a partition and let its halves be filled with gas, which is maintained at basically different temperatures using a heater and a refrigerator. Let's make a very small hole in the partition, one so very small that molecules will pass through it from one half of the vessel to the other without having time to collide with each other. At equilibrium, the flows of molecules passing through the holes in both directions will be equal. The flow is proportional to the concentration of molecules and their average thermal speed. And the speed in turn is indeed proportional to the square root of the temperature from which we actually derive the following equality. It turns out that the concentrations are inversely proportional to the square roots of the temperatures. And the pressure is proportional to the product of concentration and temperature. Substituting the concentration ratio here, we find that the pressure is related to the square roots of the temperatures. 
and it turns out that the pressure in the different halves of the vessel will be different. Where the temperature is higher, the pressure will also be higher. And of course, this will only be the case if the hole is small enough compared to the mean free path of the molecules. Otherwise, the pressure will naturally equalize. But the radiometer with a vein is not at all like this model. It has no holes, but the air has been evacuated from the sphere, though not completely, to a pressure of approximately one pascal. At such a residual pressure, the concentration of molecules is approximately about 10 to the 14th molecules per cubic centimeter, and their mean free path is about one centimeter. By the way, we have a video on this topic and we recommend you watch it. And it turns out that the concentration of gas molecules is sufficiently high for us to even discuss the pressure, temperature, and density of the gas near the blackened and mirrored surfaces of the blades. But on the other hand, the mean free path is indeed quite large. It is comparable to the size of the blades themselves. And therefore, the pressure on different sides of the vein does not equalize. And as a result of this significant pressure difference, the vein ultimately rotates inside the radiometer, leading to the rotation of the vein. The rotation speed of the radiometer's vein can be used to determine the power of the incident radiation. The spot from the laser pointer is bright, but its size is small and the total power of the radiation is low, so the vein rotates not very fast. Let's use an ultraviolet flashlight instead of a laser. Its radiation is clearly visible due to the fluorescence of the white sheet of paper. And the radiometer's vein rotates even under such even ever so slight illumination. And now let's carefully conduct the final experiment and place the radiometer in the freezer compartment of the refrigerator. And now the vein starts to rotate, but not with the mirrored sides forward as in all previous experiments, but with the blackened sides forward. Why does this happen? Please share your thoughts and let us know your valuable opinions in the comments section of this video on YouTube.